Park, where the American stage begins, NBC presents Best Plays, transcribed with John Chapman. Best Play, a series of hour-length dramas based on the famous theatrical books begun by the late Burns Mantle. Now edited by the distinguished drama critic of the New York Daily News, John Chapman. Mr. Chapman. One of the most important things a playwright must do is choose a title for his play. He rarely calls it something simple, like Elmer. And his title doesn't have to indicate what a play is about, either, which is why we have never had a drama titled Martin Loves Isabel, but Isabel Loves Joe. And so it is that the play which won the Critics' Circle Prize last season, a piece about a writer and an English girl in Berlin, is called I Am a Camera. The author is John Van Druten, who is quite a man with titles. In 1943, Mr. Van Druten worked for three weeks and wrote a comedy for three characters. And one character per week is par for the course. It had the sixth longest run for a play on Broadway, 1,557 performances. It was about a boy and a girl falling in love, but instead of calling it falling in love, Mr. Van Druten named it the voice of the turtle, a phrase from the Song of Solomon, what Solomon meant was turtle dove, a very affectionate bird, and this is what Mr. Van Druten means, too. It's a play for adults, told in the adult Van Druten manner. From the original Broadway cast, we are happy to have Elliot Nugent and Audrey Christie, and for the girl in the case, we are proud to present Martha Scott, who was in that cast for a year. Now the time of the singing of birds has come, so let's drop in on the New York apartment of a girl named Sally Middleton. <laughs> Day, Romeo, I come. This do I drink to thee. There, I know it. Oh, darn. Have a faint cold fear. Still to my veins, it almost freezes up. Olive! Sally, darling. Oh, come in. How are you? Couldn't be better. Oh. So, this is the new apartment. Oh, it's very grand. Well, this is the living room. Mm -hmm. It's sunken. Yeah. Uh, the kitchen's in there. Uh, how did you find this? Claire Henley's. Claire's on the road with the lunch. Mm, don't know how that girl gets the break she does. But, darling, I was sick about your show. Uh, how long did you run, actually? Five days. Hmm. Get any notices? A <laughs> couple of mentions. Uh, this is the bedroom in here. Oh, darling, dar this is just the cutest place I ever saw in all my life. Oh, is this where you look out? That window has the view. Uh -huh. It's the summer garden of the Bonne Chanson, that French restaurant next door. Oh, what's that like? Lovely, but terribly expensive. You know, no menu. The man just comes and suggests. See, put yourself right next door to temptation, eh? Or is it for the boyfriends when they come to take you out? Where shall we eat? Well, wherever you say. How about the place next door? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I once thought of taking a place over the colony myself. Yes, but why did you move? I was tired of a hotel room, and uh, there were reasons. Uh, what? Oh, not now. <laughs> Come on and have a drink. Lovely, lovely. Oh, Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. The part's all marked. What on earth are you studying Juliet for? Practice. Darling, you are out of your mind. You know you take the theater too seriously. You'll be going to Madame Pushkin's school next, studying the free body and learning how to act milk. <laughs> See, I had the greatest success telling about Madame Pushkin and the company, by the way. Henry Atherton, a daughter. As I, I gave you credit for having invented her. Was it wonderful playing with Henry Atherton? I've always had the most terrific thing about him. Oh, you used to have, too. Did I? Oh, well, it's gone now if I did. Oh, uh, by the way, I've asked someone to call for me here. Is that all right? Of course. Who is it? A man called Bill Page. An actor? 
Uh, no, just a man. At least he used to be. He's a soldier now. He's at camp, uh, oh, something or other up the Hudson. What's he like? Oh, he's sweet. And he's mine. Oh, well, I didn't mean to. Oh, no, no, darling, but I just thought I'd tell you. Are you in love with him? No, darling, not a bit. But he's attractive, only he's sort of uh, the reserved kind. Oh, what <clears throat> happened to the commander? Ned Burling. Oh, darling, now you're talking. Eh, he's a sea somewhere, I guess. Do you ever hear from him? No, no, he's not the writing kind. He was, you know, just butch. Besides, that was one of those lovely things that isn't meant to last. Uh, <laughs> get me, hell goings on. <laughs> one of those lovely things that isn't meant to last. Sally, darling, what's the matter? You're unhappy about something. What is it? Is it love? I guess so. If you can call it that. But you can always call it that. Come on now, tell Auntie Olive all about it. <laughs> Well, well, you've heard of Kenneth Bartlett, the producer. Not him. Oh, Sally, how sensational. And he's putting on Romeo and Juliet for you. Don't be silly. You know he only does musicals. Oh, yes, the new one opened last night. It's a smash from the notices. Hey, where'd you meet him? Uh, at a cocktail party. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go on, tell. Well, he's terribly nice. Young and attractive, and, well, we talked about the theater, of course, and then he took me on to dinner. We went to the Bon Chanson. That was the first time I'd been there. But not the last. No. Uh -huh. It sort of became our place. Eh? How long ago was all this? Two months. His show was in rehearsal then. He told me all about it, sang me some of the songs. He made me feel wonderful. Like being starred and getting the star dressing room, you know? <laughs> yes, I know. Well, then I found that Claire was going away and had this place right next door. To Your me. place? So I took it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, just occasionally he ate up here and, oh, I don't know. It was nice. Oh, I love having someone to do for. It was sort of exciting, like having... Your cousin come to visit you when one was little. I see. And uh, what went wrong? I did. Uh, uh, yes, I knew, dear, but um, uh, what went wrong? Uh, he talked a lot about keeping it gay, not bringing love into it or getting serious about each other. And you did, and he didn't like that. He said I made scenes. Did you? They wouldn't be called scenes if they were in a play, but... Yes, I, I guess I made scenes little ones. He said goodbye a month ago. Oh, I've been so miserable ever since. We've had the most awful weather. I don't think spring's ever coming this year. What did I have to go and fall in love for? Or if I did, why did I have to go and show it? Or worse still, talk about it. I believe there's nothing men hate so much as talking about it. There's nothing they hate so much as you're talking about it. Well, it's never going to happen again. Mm. Should never have started in the first place. If I'd stayed home in Joplin, none of this would have happened. Mm hmm. Oh, dear, I wonder what's happened to Bill. I hope they gave him my message. Say, would you mind if I called up the hotel to ask? No, do. It's in the bedroom. Oh, thanks, darling. I'll uh, freshen up your drink for you. Shall I fix the drink for him, too? Who? Bill. Oh, oh, better wait until we know whether he's coming. Oh, hello, uh, give me the desk, please. Hello, desk. Uh, this is Miss Lashbrook. Has the Sergeant Page called for me? I left a note. Oh, he did? How long ago? Oh, I see, thank you. Uh, by the way, you might just see if there are any messages for me. I'll hold on. Did you get him? He's on his way here. Here's a drink. Oh, thanks, darling. Hello. Yes. Uh, yeah, I see. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Mm. Who called? Lieutenant Commander. What number? No, uh, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait, I got a pencil. Where's your pencil? Right Where's here, your... right oh, here, darling. Please, please, please. Give me that number again, please. Yes, yes, I got it. What, 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 what time is that? Oh, I see. Thank you. Thanks. Was that the commander? Yes, he's in town. He called at five o'clock. 
Oh, I must call him. Oh, well, then but, I... uh, oh, Sally, don't go. <sighs> Wouldn't you know it would happen like this? <laughs> well, at least he called me. That's something. You're still crazy about him, aren't you? In my worst way. Well, don't let him know it. <laughs> oh, you giving me advice now. Hello. It's Commander Burling there. Ned, this is Olive. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. I just called the hotel and they told me. When did you get into town? Well, I never got it. I've been on the road with a play, and I guess the mail got all... Oh, I can't. No, I, I'm terribly sorry, but I can't. Uh, how about lunch tomorrow? Oh, well, n no, no, I am tied up the whole weekend. Y yes, I know, darling. I, I know. Oh, darn it, I'll do it. <laughs> yes, yes, I will. I don't know how I'm ever going to manage, but I will. What's the time now? Dude, no, no, make it eight, will you? Uh-huh. Ate at my hotel. Mm. Lovely to talk to you. <laughs> Bye now. There. There is an object lesson in how not to act with a man. You're seeing him tonight? Uh, what about the other one? I don't know. I must think Bill's on his way here. Sally, what am I going to say? Well, I don't know. No, it would be some help. I can. Uh, uh, could I say that my family can't? Oh, no, no. Bill knows I haven't any. Besides, one can always ditch one's family after midnight. Now, who can't one ditch? That's what it comes down to. Who can't one ditch? Mother, father, grandmother, uncle. Gra oh, I've got it. Husband. Whose husband? Mine. Well, doesn't he know you're having a husband? Well, darling, I've got to tell him something. <gasps> There's Bill. Now, listen, you help me. How? With the husband's story. Oh, I couldn't. Darling, I would for you. I must answer the door. Well, what's the time? Oh, of a quarter to seven. Oh, Lord, and I've got to be dressed by eight. Why do things like this always have to happen to me? Oh, shall I let him in? Well, yes, I guess you have to. Go. Miss Sally Middleton? Yes, sir. Won't you come in? Olive's here. Oh, thanks. Bill, Hello. darling. Oh, Sally, this is Bill Page, Sally Middleton. How do you do? How do you do? May I take your things? Yeah. Uh, let me get you a drink. Thanks. Scotch all right? Fine. Well, Olive, you're looking blooming. Oh, yes, yes, I'm fine, fine. I don't know whether you've made any plans for this weekend, but I've made a lot. You have? Yes, I thought tonight we'd just have a quiet dinner and not go anywhere afterward. Just sort of concentrate on good food, good drink, and good... Oh, well, I've got your drink. Mm, thank Here. you so much. Then I uh, I thought tomorrow we might take in a show. A new musical opened last night. No, they'll be sold out, but I thought uh, being in the theater, you might know some way of getting tickets. Well, have you got any strings you can pull? Bill... There's, um, something I've got to tell you. Excuse uh, me. Don't go, Sally. You left your glass. Uh, no, dear, I don't want another I'll drink. Get it. I... Well, uh, what is it? Oh, Bill, I, I... I just don't know how to tell you, but... Well, I'm afraid our weekend's off. How do you mean? Uh, darling, I can't come out with you. I... Listen, you didn't know I was married, did you? No. When? Well, about 18 months ago. It, it didn't take, so I... Well? Well, just this afternoon, my husband called up. He's in the Navy. It's his last leave, and, well, he wanted to see me. Yes? yes. Well, I've got to have dinner with him tonight. Oh, well, that's tough for you. And for me. Yes, I know. Well, we'll meet later. No, 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 darling, I can't. I, I see. Oh, now you're not mad at me. No, but uh, well, you can't expect me not to be a little disappointed. It's all right, though. These things happen. Not often, I guess, but... Uh... Oh, 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 well, but I I'll see you next time you get leave. Okay. So you do understand. Oh, sure. Everything. Oh, Bill, you are sweet. But then you always were. <laughs> and now, look, I've got to go. Uh, Sally! Sally! Yes? You want me to take you anywhere, Olive? No, no, no. You just stay right here and drink your drink in peace. What is 
I've broken it to him, Sally. And he's been sweet. Oh. And now I've got to fly. It started to rain. Oh, great, great. Can you get a taxi anywhere around here? Oh, right at the door. Good. Uh, but not when it's raining. Oh, well, I'll manage. Oh, uh, where are you staying, Bill? Well, I, I don't know. I haven't... Oh, uh, Bill, I should have gotten you a room. Oh, don't worry. I'll find something. <laughs> yes, uh, sure. <clears throat> well, I'll call you, Sally. Bless you both, and goodbye, Bill. Goodbye. Have fun. Oh, Bill, that's not kind. Not kind at all. Well? Well? Oh, just give her a minute to get downstairs, and then I'll go along. There's no hurry. Aren't you going out? No. Won't you have another drink? That one's flat. Are you and Olive old friends? We are, rather. She was in the first play I was ever in. Oh. I ought to know, of course, but I haven't been around. Uh, are you a well-known actress? Me? I've never been in anything but flop. <laughs> You're not in anything now? No, nor likely to be for months. What do actresses do between jobs? Well... I just sit and think about how I'm going to act all the parts I'll never get a chance to act. Here's the thing. Thank you. Like uh, Juliet or Nina and the Seagull. Uh, oh, that's a Russian play. I know. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be patronizing. Only uh, not a lot of people do know, and I didn't know if you knew anything about the theater. I, I don't know anything about real life. Real life? All of us uh, actors and authors, too, we aren't really living in the real world at all. We're giving our whole lives to make-believe. Why do you do it, then? I guess because I'm made that way, and in the hope of... Someday seeing your name in lights? Well, I hope it isn't that. Of course, that's part of it. It'd be silly to pretend it wasn't, but... The hope of one day being able to express... Well, that thing one feels one's got to express. That one talent which is death to hide? Oh, well, what's that? That's Milton. A sonnet on his blindness. It's years since I've looked at it, but, uh... When I consider how my light is spent, ere half my days in this dark world and wide, and that one talent which is death to hide, lodged with me, useless... Oh, I, I don't remember anymore. Oh, yes. Well, that's wonderful, if you have the talent. Have you? I mean, do you do anything creative? No, I'm afraid the only talent I've ever had is a talent for uh, appreciation. <laughs> what did you do before the army? Nothing at all, except have a very good time. Were you a playboy? Well, that's not a thing one would ever think of oneself as being, but <laughs> <laughs> I suppose by present-day standards, anyway, that's, uh, that's what I was. See, my family had a lot of money, and I went to Princeton and Europe and uh, appreciated things. Very much, indeed. <laughs> And then? Well, then things went wrong with the family and the business went smash and I had to come back and buckle down to uh, real life. Mm. And then the army. Yes? That one talent which is death to hide. <laughs> that sums you up, does it? Oh, no, Milton could say that. I'm not that conceited. But it's what it feels like when you're out of work or doing something second rate. It's like having something entrusted to you for the benefit of others, that you're wasting. Oh, no, that sounds awful. Phony and arty like Madame Pushkin. Who's she? Well, she's an imaginary character Olive and I invented. Her husband, uh, Dr. Pushkin, is a very great director. And every morning he chases her around the bedroom in her nightgown to give her the free body. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Olive ever tell you about her? <laughs> Olive and I have never talked like this. I'm sorry. What for? Going on about myself. I like it. I've gone on about myself, too, which is something I haven't done for years. Will you have dinner with me? Oh, uh, no thanks. Why not? You don't have to ask me. Oh, I know I don't, but will you? Well, we go Dutch. No, I asked you. Only because Olive let you down. Only because if she hadn't, I wouldn't have had the chance. Well, thank you very much, then. Good. Where shall we go? Wherever you say. What's the place next door like? Oh, uh, I would... Well, very expensive. Well, let's go there. Oh, uh, have you anything against it? No, but it's very expensive. 
There was a restaurant of the same name in Paris that I used to go to quite a lot once upon a time. I have certain memories about it. Uh, will you go with me? I'll just get my coat. All right. Nice. Did, uh, did you get wet? <laughs> Running from next door, no. <laughs> uh, come in and sit down, won't you? I am in. Yes. <laughs> um, that was a lovely dinner. Thank you. You were right. It is a good place. It was better even than usual tonight. Oh, that was your remembering the proprietor from Paris. And he, you. Mm. You must have gone there a lot. Yeah, I did. I used to go with uh, a girl I used to go with. We used to think of it as our place. We were very young. Were you in love with her? I used to think I was. What happened to her? She got married. Women do, you know. Yes. This isn't being a very amusing evening for you. Oh. Uh, going to that restaurant sort of upset you, didn't it? Well, upset is too strong a word. It was just... I don't know, just seeing it all done up like the place in Paris. Well, it... Uh, Brought things back. The girl, you mean? Mm. Was she a French girl? No, she was an American. Oh, I wasn't having an affair with Mimi, the little Medinette. Mm. But I didn't mean only the girl. I meant everything. Those were happy years. I was very happy then. And you're not now. Mm. Is anyone? It's awful, but I am. Quite often. <laughs> not at all awful. It's wonderful. But uh, I'm afraid I infected you at dinner. You were a bit low, I thought. Well, strangely, that place has memories for me, too. More recent ones than yours. Oh, but... why didn't you tell me? Oh, I... Well, I'm afraid it wasn't a very good choice for either of us. I am sorry. You're having a miserable time. No, I'm having a grand time. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're oh, tired. <laughs> Would you like to stretch out on the couch? No, no, thanks. The chair is fine. Uh, uh look... Did you know Olive was going to tell me all that story? What do you mean? Oh, you don't think I believed it, do you? You didn't think I would believe it. Olive is far too, well, too frank and free a person not to have mentioned a husband if she had one. Are you in love with Olive? Is that your favorite question? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not in the least in love with her, so don't worry. I guess I'm a little sore at her for letting me down, but I'll get over that by tomorrow. As quickly as that. I think so. Oh, I am. Sorry. I should be going. Well, if you're sleepy. Well, has the rain stopped? Well, I don't know. Uh, no, I, I think it's worse. Oh, you can't go out in that. Well, if it doesn't let up soon, I'll have to. Well, don't go yet. It, it's sure to stop. Well, then we might as well make ourselves comfortable again. Ah. Tell me some more about Madame Pushkin. Oh, Oh, it's silly. No, I like the sound of her. Uh, well, to begin with, she believes you must never play a part the way it's written. That is too easy. Always you must look for the other side of the character. When I play um, Lady Macbeth, I concentrate on her, her, her childlike qualities. When we come to the scene from The Walking Sleep... Uh, I skip. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, her parents were on the stage, too, you know. Uh -huh. uh, she was born during an intermission of the cherry orchard. <laughs> Are you making this all up? <laughs> Certainly. Olive and I do it for hours and then. We call it how to be ham, though highbrow. <laughs> Olive... Well, now, look, you needn't get self-conscious about mentioning Olive's name to me. She hasn't broken my heart, you know. Has anyone ever? Did the girl in Paris? Mm -hmm. At it again? Oh, dear, it's an obsession. <laughs> Why? Why is it an obsession? Oh, I don't know. Because I'm a fool, I guess. I always think that everyone ought to be in love with someone. Hmm. Are you? I think I am. Not sure. Have you been in love often? No. Well, not often. Well, I suppose actresses need to fall in love a lot, huh? To be oh. good actresses? Oh, yes, Mr. Page. Always when I play a role, I must be in love. <laughs> the telephone, excuse please, I go. Sure. <laughs> Make yourself with the 
radio, if you like. Okay. Hello? Uh, hello? Is Madame Pushkin speaking, Miss Dallas? <laughs> I was just telling about it. To Bill. Yes, he's still here. No, we went out to dinner. No, we had a very nice evening. He wasn't a bit miserable. Olive, you don't mind our having gone to dinner, do you? Well, it's raining. Hard. Well, are you having fun? Yes, of course he's all right. Why not? Well, uh, all right. I won't tell him if you don't want me to. Goodbye, Olive. Bill! Hmm. Oh. What, what? Oh, oh dear. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I, I've been asleep. Well, I better get along and look for a hotel room. Hmm? The hotels are all full up. Oh, are they? Uh, uh, the friend who just called up said they were. Well, I'll dig up something. Well, this rain is liable to keep up all night. So? Would you want to stay here? Uh, that sofa's a day bed, and it's all made up. It's quite comfortable. Well, I, I know it is, but, uh... Oh, I... I don't think I should do that. Seems silly for you to go out in all that rain. You'll get so wet looking for a taxi. You have to change of clothes. You're tired. I'll, I'll give you breakfast in the morning. Oh, you needn't do that. I'd like to. Well... I am tired. Well, then it's settled. Here, I'll just take this cover off. Well, thanks. Uh, uh, I'll uh, empty these ashtrays. Well, good night. Good night, Sally. Good night, Cousin Bill. <laughs> In a moment, Act Two of The Voice of the Turtles, starring Elliot Nugent and Martha Scott with Audrey Christie. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Now, Act Two of the Best Plays production of The Voice of the Turtles. With Elliot Nugent, Martha Scott, and Audrey Christie. Here again is John Chapman. It's late the next morning in Sally Middleton's apartment. In the kitchen, a pot of coffee boils on the stove, and in the living room, Bill Page sits alone. Good morning! Well, good morning. I wondered where you'd gone. I've been shopping. Well, you had breakfast? I just put on some coffee, as you said in your note I might. Oh, I meant to get you breakfast, but I had to go out. Did you have breakfast? No, I had a cocktail. A what? A cocktail. When? Oh, about a half an hour ago. <laughs> Made me a little heady. Well, didn't you have any breakfast before you had the cocktail? No, there wasn't time. I thought if you were still here and hadn't a date, we, we might have lunch. I did some marketing. Yeah, you seem to have done a lot. I could never resist a delicatessen. I hate eating alone, except things you can sort of cuddle up on the couch with, like uh, potato salad. I should never have thought of cuddling up with potato salad. I better take these in the kitchen. I'll do it. Oh, uh, don't squash anything. Oh, the loveliest spring morning out. The weather's changed at last, in more ways than one, I think. Oh, just set the packages right there. Okay. I've got a job. Yeah. That's what I went out about. That's what I had the cocktail about, too. Oh, I, I didn't disturb you, did I? I tried not no, to... No, I didn't know a thing until half past 11. I was afraid the telephone might have woken you. Mm. Uh, wakened you. But you were still sleeping when I left. Not snoring, I hope. Oh, no, you were very peaceful. Oh, do you like orange juice? I'll, I'll fix it. That would be fine. You're depressed this morning. Me? No, I just haven't had my coffee yet. 
Mm, well, it's just about ready. You'd better have some, too. I'm not depressed. No, I know. You think I'm tight. No, I don't. Well, I am. <laughs> a little. <laughs> tell me about the job. Oh, it's a lovely job. Only, uh, may I tell you when we sit down? I hate telling a story in bits, even if it's a good story. All right. Shall we have the coffee in here? If you like. Uh, by the way, your telephone rang while you were out. It rang twice. Oh, who was it? I don't know. Didn't you answer it? No. Well, why not? Well, I didn't think it would sound very well, having a man's voice answering your telephone. I wouldn't have thought of that. Mm -hmm. Here. Coffee's ready. Thank you. You mean you just let it ring? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't think I could do that, even in someone else's house. It always sounds to me as if it were going crazy when I don't answer it. Crazy? <laughs> I see. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you feel settled enough now to tell me about the job? Yes, I think so. It's a play that's in rehearsal already. I knew about it from a friend of mine who was going to be in it. Well, yesterday was the fifth day. Oh, I don't guess you know about that. You can fire actors up to the fifth day if they're no good. No, I didn't know. Uh, what happens after the fifth day? Well, you have to keep them. Or pay them two weeks' salary. It's a rule of equity. Well, <laughs> it seems they fired her yesterday. Your friend? <laughs> yes, I... I feel sort of badly about that. Uh, getting her part, I mean. Well, go on. They fired her and sent for you. Hmm? Yes, I'm starting rehearsals Monday. The author took me next door for a cocktail, and I didn't like to tell him I hadn't had any breakfast. It sounded too pathetic, so uh, I had an Alexander. They're nourishing. Mm -hmm. And and then he told me something really thrilling. What was that? Well, I'm uh, not supposed to tell, but... Uh, well, you don't know anyone in the theater, do you? Only Olive. Well, I don't guess you'll be seeing her. No, I don't, I don't guess uh, not. Well, I think I can tell you. You see, the leading man isn't very good either, and with Olive's tour closing, there's a chance they might get Henry Atherton, and that'd be wonderful. I've always had the most terrific crush on him. A weasened, whimsy little man with dyed gold hair? It isn't dyed. Is it? Mm. Well, anyway, he's a great star, and it'd be a big chance for me. Oh! <gasps> I have to go mad in one act. Oh? Well, I, I mean, not very mad. I mean, not straws and things. Well, I'm glad of that. I don't like plays where people go very mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, things are looking up for you. The rain is over, the winter is past, and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. What'd you say? I was quoting from the Bible. Oh, but turtles don't have voices, do they? Turtle dove. Oh, I never could understand the Bible. I don't see why they give it to children to read. You know, we ought to do something to celebrate this job of yours. Will you have dinner with me? You took me to dinner last night. Mm -hmm. So what? So you shouldn't do it again. Well, I want to do it again very much. And uh, what do you say we go to a theater? That new musical. Do you like musicals? If they're good. Well, this one's supposed to be very good. Yes, it is. I've, I've heard some of the songs. Well, let's go then. We'd never get see. Well, I wonder whether Olive might not have some pull. I started to ask her yesterday. Well, I don't think she has, and I wouldn't want to ask her now anyway. Why not? Well, you're her friend, and Olive's rather against that kind of thing, bow snatching. I, I don't know that I really ought to come at all. Now, you listen to me. In the first place, you haven't snatched me. Any snatching that's been going on around here, I've done. And in the second place, I'm not her bow anymore. She gave me the good old-fashioned gate last night, even though I did suspect that uh, she was trying to leave it on the latch. Well, the point is, we are going to that musical. Hey, how does, uh, well, how do you get tickets for a show like that at the last minute? People do. Well, there are things called house seats. Tickets the management keeps up its sleeve for influential people. Ah, uh -huh. who's the management? Um, Kenneth Bartlett's putting it on. Do you know him? Yes, I... Know him. Well, then call him up. Tell him that a friend of yours, a serviceman, is in town. You can say it's his last furlough. Is it? No, but it makes a better story. And can he please buy two of the house seats tonight? Huh? What's the matter? I can't ask him. There are reasons, really, there are. Well, don't be so worried about it. But you wanted to see it. You're having an awful leave. Do you believe in pride? Now, what do you mean by that? Suppose you behaved badly to someone. Do you think you ought to ask them a favor? Well, I should hardly think so. What's this about? 
The theater tickets? No. Oh, no, just uh, general principles. I'm sure you oughtn't to. Oughtn't to what? Ask the favor. Well, let's stop this speculation. I'm still hungry. Couldn't we get lunch? Oh, yes. I'll fix something now. You must be starved. Sally. What? You're very sweet. I haven't the faintest idea of what goes on in that funny little head of yours, but you're very sweet. Oh. That was a surprise. Do you mind? No, it was nice. I thought so, too. Well, uh, let me help you with the food. What are we going to have? Not potato salad, I hope. No, I thought maybe uh, scrambled eggs. Good. I'll get the frying pan. Do you have a double boiler? They're better in a double boiler. Are they? I I've never used one. You like them wet or dry? What? Your eggs. Oh, uh, wet, I should think. Good, so do I. And how about coming out of that trance? I'm sorry. Will you excuse me a minute? Sure. I'll get him started. Come in and learn how to make scrambled eggs properly. Bill, hmm? it's all right about tonight. I got the ticket. You have? I called how? up Kenneth Bartlett there at the theater in your name. You're to wow. pick him up by 7 o'clock. Oh, he wants us to have a drink with him during the intermission. Good. What's he like? Oh, he's nice. Very nice. What made you suddenly change your mind? I don't know. Yes, I do. What was it? You're kissing me. I don't quite see the connection. I don't think I could explain. May I kiss you again for getting them? If you want to. I do. Thank you. Thank you? Now, about these eggs, I will give you a lesson here. <laughs> You don't want to answer that. Why not? Because you know perfectly well who it is. Olive. Sure, and I don't know what you're whispering for. She can't possibly hear you. Well, do you want to talk to her? Now? Not really. Well, then, this is your first lesson in self-control with the telephone. You just sit here next to me and let it ring. Oh, it's no good. I can't stand it. There. It's all over. It's stopped feel as if it had died and I'd killed it. You are crazy. I wonder if that was Olive on the telephone. Oh, she's probably been calling ever since we left the theater. Too bad we had to run into her. We, we should have seen her in the intermission or afterwards. She'll think we were avoiding her. Sure, that's why she's calling. But we weren't. We couldn't help her. I know. Well, doesn't that worry you? Not a bit. You know, um, I didn't think the guy looked so hot, did you? Of course, I may be prejudiced, but uh, I don't think I'd have turned on me for him. I was a little disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I liked your friend Kenneth Bartlett. He is nice, isn't he? Yeah, I thought he was grand. He likes you, too. How do you know? He said so. Told me what a grand kid you are and a good little actress and uh, generally tops. Did he? When? In the men's room at the plaza. Well, that's where men always tell each other things like that. Do they? You didn't mind going on with this party, did you? No, it was a grand party. I've had a grand evening and a grand day. Except that I haven't seen very much of you. Oh, you've seen me steadily for the last 30 hours. Oh, I have not. I slept 10 of them, darn it. Will you spend tomorrow with me to make up? I'd love to. Good. Uh, Sally, did you, uh, did you notice the girl in the Persian room that I went over to talk to? Yes. Do you know who that was? No. Not... Uh-huh. That was the girl from Paris. Oh, it's been that kind of an evening. How long since you've seen her? Seven years. Not since Paris? Were you engaged or anything? We were engaged in everything. We were going to be married that summer, but that was the summer that things busted up for me. Was it awful? 
seeing her again? No, not after the first minute. It, uh, that was funny, too, because last night at the restaurant, well, it did get me down remembering it all. And then, the minute we had said hello, the corner of my mouth stopped twitching, and I found myself looking at her and wondering what it had all been about. I don't know when I stopped loving her. I just stopped thinking about her, I guess, and didn't realize I had until tonight. Last night must have been just a sort of uh, reflex action. I know what you mean. Does it feel good to be over it? Yeah, good, but uh, a little shocking if you've been cherishing the illusion that you weren't. Yes. I was in love with Kenneth Bartlett. At least, I thought I was. I know. How do you know? Oh, he didn't tell me, I guess. Did you find that you were over it tonight? I was dreading seeing him at the theater, and then he came up to us, and it was all right. I just thought how nice he was. Sally? What? You don't think my coming along had anything to do with helping to set you free, do you? I don't know. I'd like to think it did. I think it did. I'm glad. So am I. Did... No, I won't ask that. Were you going to ask whether your coming along helped to uh, set me free? You don't have to answer that, and I didn't ask it. Well, if I say that I think I was free already, let me say, too, that I think it was your coming along that helped me know I was. And that I'm very grateful. I'm glad. So am I. Come here. You're very sweet. No. What's the matter? Oh, we mustn't go on like this. You mustn't. Why not? Because I've given it up. For Lent? No. Permanently. Oh, Sally, darling. But I can't go on kissing every man I meet. Do you? I did. Well, not really, but I've got to draw the line somewhere. So you draw it at me? Well, there's nothing personal about it. Oh, I, I do you. like you, but we mustn't go on like that. Oh, I'm sorry. Do uh, you want me to go? No, but... Well, maybe you'd rather... All right. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, it's all right, as long as you like me. I do. And you'll see me tomorrow? If you still want to. Sure, I want to. I want to see you all tomorrow. What shall we do? Do you want to come here to breakfast? Yes, please. What time? What time would you like? Oh, I don't want to waste any of tomorrow with you. Nine o'clock. I'll leave a call at the hotel for eight. Oh, but that's awful for you. Eight o'clock on Sunday morning when you're on leave. I don't mind, and then you can sleep until half past. Well, why don't you stay here again? Huh? You mean that? Of course, it does waste your hotel room. And disappoints the hotel calf, but I think it can take it. Well, then, will you? Well, uh, sure. Thanks. Do you want to turn in now? Well, it's uh, after three. I should think I might. And, I'll, uh, and you don't have to play hostess. I'll, I'll be all right. No, I'll just empty these ashtrays. No, I'm I'm getting out of here. Why? Well, never mind why. Well, good night, Bill. Second breakfast together. You're uh, you're nice to have breakfast with. Olive. Oh, don't answer him. Oh, but I'm not. No, let her think you've gone out. She'll uh, go away. Oh, no, no, no. She'll ask the elevator man and he'll tell her I haven't. She'll come back. Let her. I can't. I'll get rid of her. You stay here in the kitchen. Oh, really? Please. All right. I'm just coming. Coming. Olive. Well, I've been ringing and ringing. Oh, I I'm sorry. I was in the bathroom. I thought I heard the buzzer. Mm-hmm. Well, how are you this morning? Oh, I'm fine. Yes, you were out very late last night. I know. How did you know? I called you until 3 o'clock. What time did you get in? Oh, about a quarter past. Mm -hmm. Where'd you go? To the Persian room with Ken. Ken? Bartlett, are you and he on again? Oh, no, no. We uh, met at the theater. Yes, I saw you. Uh, how did you get tickets? You were way down front. Well, Ken gave us the house seat. What are you fidgeting around like that for? Come and sit down, for goodness sake. Oh, I'm sorry. Listen, is that the telephone? What? No, no, I don't hear anything. Well, I think it is. I'll uh, just go and see. Uh, well, I'll just come with you. Yes, uh, do come with me. <clears throat> Hello? Hello? No. 
No, I guess it wasn't. Now, what is the matter with you? Hey, did you hear a door close? Oh, no. Well, now you're hearing things. Oh, really? Oh, for heaven's sake. Come on, sit down on the bed and relax. Yes. Now I'll sit down and relax. Well, you and uh, Bill have certainly been seeing a lot of each other. Well, I don't think he knows many people in New York. So you thought you'd be kind to him. It wasn't a question of being kind to him. He's very nice. Very nice indeed. Yes, I know he is. I introduced him to you. Uh, where did he finally end up staying? Well, he got a room at the Hotel Tap. Oh, is he there now, do you know? How should I know? Uh, would you mind if I called him up? No, of course not. Oh, thanks. Oh, there. What did you think of the show last night? Oh, I thought it was lovely. Hmm? I thought it stank. It's a big hit. Oh, anything's a hit now. Not the place I'm in. Oh, I, I want to speak to Sergeant Page, please. Oh, all right. What did you start to say? I've got a job. You haven't? What? what? Uh, oh, uh, I want to speak to Sergeant Page, please. Sergeant William Page. Yes, yes, he's registered there. Uh, what's the job? They've let Myra Foley out of the dark dreamer. They sat for me yesterday. <laughs> Darling, how exciting. Why, you that's a wonderful part. Oh. Oh. Well, I had an offer yesterday, too. Oh, what was it? They want me to go out with Tobacco Road. Are you going? Darling, all those turnips. Ugh. Will you say that Miss Lashbrook called? Lashbrook. L-A-S. Uh, no, 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 no. S is in... Oh, never mind. Say Olive. Yes, Olive as in Martini. Not there. He's probably gone out. Oh, now watch his smart. Olive, don't be that way. What's the matter? The matter is that I don't like the way you've acted about Bill. He was my beau. And you left him on my hands. Not for you to take over. I haven't taken him over. I thought you were all broken up about Kenneth Bartlett. Oh, I should have known that was just the dangerous time. Mm. You've been having fun this weekend with your commander. Well, why shouldn't I? Did you say a fun? Hasn't it been? Mm. You went to the Persian room last night. What do you think we did? What? Played gin rummy at the one, two, three until four o'clock. He, he's just discovered the gin rummy. <laughs> to think I passed a bill for that. Oh. What time does Bill have to go back tonight? Do you know? No, I don't. Oh, well, maybe we could dine together. Say, if not, that's you and me. I, uh... I don't think I can. Oh, well, just an early dinner. I want to get to bed early anyway. We'll see, but I don't think so. Thanks very much. Oh, now you're mad at me. Well, I don't think you have any right. I have a perfect right. Bill was my guy. Well, he isn't anymore. Yeah. Olive, I think you'd better go. Oh, don't worry. I'll go fast enough, only... Sally, listen. You wouldn't be going and getting Silly and sentimental over Bill, would you? Because if you do, you'll lose him even quicker than you lost Kenneth Bartlett. I have no intention of getting sentimental. No, darling, no intention. But you're the kind who can't sew a button on for a man without thinking it's for life. And Bill said to me over and over again that he's no place for sentiment in his scheme. Well, I've told you before, neither have I. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh! Maybe that's Bill. Oh, it couldn't be. I'll get well, it. Why not? Good morning. Hello, Bill. Good morning. I had to go out to get my Sunday paper, so I brought you these flowers. Oh, how lovely. Daffodils. They come before the swallow dares. And take the winds of March with beauty. Oh, what a cute saying. He was a cute sayer. Oh, who? Shakespeare. Hmm, was that Shakespeare? Mm hmm. Uh, William? I uh, love spring flowers. I'll just put them in water. Oh, there, I'll get it. Well, Olive, what uh, what sort of time have you been having? Not a lot of fun. Say, Bill, I wonder, uh, could we dine together? No, I'm afraid I have a dinner date. Oh, that's too bad. Well, how about a cocktail, then? I'm afraid that's gone, too. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I've got to go out. Oh, where? Well, that was the producer calling. They've made another change in the cast. They've got Henry Atherton. Oh, I've got to go right away. Well, uh, can I take you there? Well, all right. I, I, I've got to make up my face a little bit. 
Can you still not manage cocktails, by the way? I'm afraid I can't. Mm -hmm. Well, you let me know the next time you're coming, won't you? And I won't let anything interfere. Olive, uh, yes. I think we'd better just leave things as they are. Oh. Well, I guess I bought that all right. <laughs> Well, goodbye, Bill. Goodbye, Olive. Say goodbye to Sally for me. Oh, by the way, Bill, did Sally tell you anything about Ned? No, but I saw him with you last night, and Olive, you'd never have married that, not in a million years. You know, I never knew men could be such cats. Goodbye, Bill. Mm -hmm. Don? Uh, yeah, I'm afraid that's the end of a beautiful friendship. Oh, I'm afraid for me, too. Well, it can't be helped. Where are you rehearsing? At Henry Atherton's apartment. Oh, is that usual? What? Rehearsing in an actor's apartment. Oh, yes, quite, if they're stars. Hmm. Why? What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I... Oh, what am I going to do? Would you like to come back here? I'll give you the key. You'll have dinner with me? Yes. Promise? I promise. Now, I must go. Oh, Sally, I don't see anything of you at all. I want to talk to you about, oh, about so many things. No, why? We don't need to talk. Nothing to talk about. We've had a lovely time, and we don't want to get sentimental about it. Do we? I guess not. Well, then, come along. I'm late. Sure. <laughs> Come in. Hi. How, uh, how about a drink? Champagne? Where did you find that? I found it. Not in my wine cellar. <gasps> and, Bill, all these spring flowers, why, the apartment's full of them. Oh, I bought all I could carry. <laughs> well, here. Here's to the spring. Spring. <laughs> well, how was the rehearsal? Exciting. And, uh... Henry Atherton? He was good. Oh, you're right, though. His hair is dyed. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. I daren't see it yet. But, you know, I really think this may be what I've been waiting for all these years. This play, you mean? Yes. Perhaps that's part of the spring, too. Sally. What? Sally, this is our spring, isn't it? We'll have it together. Well, of course. You're going to be here. Oh, Sally, don't do that. What? Hold out on me. I don't know what you mean. I wanted us to have dinner here tonight because, well, partly because I... I want to talk to you. Oh, I wish you wouldn't. Sally, if I told you that... that given the least possible encouragement, I think I could be very much in love with you, what would you say? I wouldn't give it to you. Why not? Because I don't want you to be in love with me or, or think you are. Why don't you? Because that isn't how we started this. Oh, Sally, you don't go into a love affair deliberately. Are you afraid of getting hurt? Maybe. Sally, I wouldn't hurt you. That's something I don't see how anyone can promise anyone ever, and I wish you wouldn't talk about it. There was a book of poems around here somewhere. Yes, yes, here it is. It's Poems by Dorothy Parker. You had a whole lot of them marked. Why? Because I like them, I guess. Oh, yes, here, this one. I will not make you songs of hearts denied, and you being man would have no tears of me. And should I offer you fidelity, you'd be, I think, a little terrified. That one's double marked. You must have liked it a lot. I do. Was that by any chance your experience with... Kenneth Bartlett? Perhaps. A little. And you're afraid of it's happening again? It always happens, doesn't no, it? No, I don't think so. It does to me. Sally, I want this to have meant something to you. It did. It was terribly sweet. But I... that's all. You won't let it mean more. Not even if I tell you that if you offered me fidelity, I'd be, I think, a little gratified. In fact, if you don't offer it to me, I'll feel... I feel as if I'd had a door slammed right in my face. Oh, Bill. As if the spring had turned.
turned around and said, that's all there is. Now you can go back to winter. Not winter. We can keep it spring. No, nothing stays spring. I wouldn't want it to. It's got to become summer and fall and... Winter. Yes, yes, one day, but for both of us at the same time. Oh, Sally, I'm in love with you. There's still time to turn back. For me to turn back, I mean, without us hurting too much, but... Well, I... I told you I didn't believe in being unhappily in love. I don't. And I'm not going to be. I gave up looking forward to anything seven years ago, and I, I can't begin again hoping and wanting and planning unless there's some chance of those plans working out. You're scared of getting hurt again. Well, well, so am I. Literally scared. What do you want? I want you to let yourself love me if you can, because I think you can. I think you have a great... Great talent for love, Sally, and that you're trying to fritter it and dissipate it because it's been trodden on before. And if you go on like that, you'll kill it. And I think that's one talent that is death to hide. Oh, Bill. Bill. I'm not asking such a great deal. I think I'd like to marry you, but we won't talk about that yet. I, I want you to love me terribly, but I'm not even asking that of you yet. Oh, but I do love you. I love you terribly. That's the worst of it. Oh, Bill, I won't make scenes. I won't be troublesome. I... Shut up. You said all I want you to say now. Drink your drink. It's getting warm. I should be tight again. I haven't had any food. Not all day. Oh, you must have dinner right away. Now, you come and sit down. It'll take a little while to fix. It's all fixed. They're sending it up from next door. From our place. Oh. <laughs> it's coming up at 7. The first course is in the icebox. Fishy swad. I'll get it right now. Bill. Now you pour yourself another drink and sit down. And pour me one, too. <laughs> there you are. Madame et Servie. Oh, Bill. This is heaven. Isn't it? You have just heard the best plays production of The Voice of the Turtle by John Van Drusen. And here again is your host, drama critic John Chapman. Our thanks to Miss Scott, Miss Christie, and Mr. Nugent for a sparkling performance. Incidentally, Miss Scott and Mr. Nugent are co-starring on Broadway now in another fine comedy, The Male Animal. Next Sunday, our best play will be another Critics Circle Prize winner, Arthur Miller's drama, All My Sons, with Ed Begley and Evelyn Varden in the cast. This is Chapman saying goodbye until then. Voice of the Turtle was transcribed for radio from the original play by John Van Gruten. Best Plays is an NBC production, supervised by William Welch and directed by Edward King. Fred Collins speaking. Tonight, meet the press on NBC.